We propose here an evidence of the black and source formula without referring to the heat transfer equation of physics. To get this formula, we need some definitions and notations. We are going to write down S as a spot price of the underlying asset. S defines a geometric Boolean motion. It means that dS for a small change in the S price is mu S dt plus sigma S dz, where dz is equal to epsilon square root of dt, epsilon defining a standard normal distribution. We can also say that dS over S is equal to mu dt plus sigma dz, mu being the expected return of the stock or the expected return of the underlying asset in continuous time. And mu s is the drift of s. Sigma is the volatility of the underlying asset or the volatility of the stock. And we are going to write down E, the strike price of the coal. Based on Ito's lemma, it can be established that log of s defines a normal distribution, the first parameter of which its mean being log of s0 plus mu less sigma squared over 2 times 2, and the second parameter, the variance, being sigma squared 2. In order to simplify the notation, we are going to write down m equals to log of s0 plus mu less sigma squared over 2 times 2, and s squared is equal to sigma squared 2. Then log of s defines a normal distribution, the first parameter of which being m, and the second one being s squared. Let's remind the density function of a log normal variable. I mean that if log of s defines a normal distribution, it means that S defines a log normal distribution. The density function is F, with F of S is equal to zero if S is lower or equal to zero, and it is one over big S times small s times square root of two pi exponential of less one half log of S less m over small s squared if big S, I mean the spot price of the underlying asset, is higher than zero. We are going to say that the coal premium we are looking for is the present value in continuous time of the expected premium on expiration day. And on expiration date, the premium is equal to the intrinsic value because there is no more time premium. Based on the formula of the transfer, it's equal to exponential of less R2 times the generalized integral from less infinity to plus infinity of the max of 0 and S less C times the density function F of S dS. We can propose a breakdown of this integral into two elements, the first one being an integral from less infinity to the strike price, E, and the second one being the integral from E to plus infinity. This breakdown enables to simplify. I mean that if we take into account this first integral, it means that S is lower than E, and if S is lower than E, S less E is negative and the maximum is equal to zero. For the second one, we can see that S is at least equal to E, which means that S less E is positive, and then the max of zero S less E is equal to S less E. Then we can replace F of S by the density function which has been defined on the previous slide. E is positive, and then we can take into account 
the value of f of s when s is positive, which corresponds to what is written down in green. We can then develop what's inside this integral. And then we have s times what's in green, and then s simplify here, less e, which can be exited from the integral, times exponential of less r2, times what's in green, but of course, uh, 1 over small s squared root of 2 pi can be exited from the integral. Of course, this big S remains inside the integral as the variable for integration is s. This is what was written down at the bottom of the previous page. Then we are going to propose a change of variable. We are going to say that log of s less m over small s is a new variable, the name of which is u, which means that s is equal to exponential of su plus m, which defines a function phi of u, the derivative of which being s exponential of su plus m. And if we come back to this expression in green, if we replace the old variable s by the new one u, we have phi less 1 of u. Then we can go on and, of course, replace what we had here by what's here corresponding to the change of variable. Here we have phi less 1 of e, which is log of e less m over s. Of course, phi less 1 of plus infinity is plus infinity. Exponential of less 1 half, what's in green corresponds now to exponential of less 1 half u squared. And if we multiply by phi prime of u du, we have s exponential of su plus m du. And of course, we have the same change of variable for the second integral. Uh, the difference between the first one being the s, which is here, and which is replaced by exponential of su plus m. We can simplify some terms. First of all, the s here, the small s here, which are in blue. And uh, then for the second integral, we can also simplify by s, but also by exponential of su plus m, which is in red. Here, this is what we had on the previous page. And then we would like to simplify these two integrals and to refer to the cumulative distribution function of the standard normal distribution. We remind that if f is a density function, its generalized integral from less infinity to plus infinity is equal to 1. And this integral can be broken down into two parts. The first part corresponding to the integral from less infinity to x and the second one to x to plus infinity, which looks like this one. And of course, we can isolate this integral from x to plus infinity, which is then equal to 1 less this integral, which goes on the left, which means 1 less integral from less infinity to x of f of t dt. And if f is the density function of the normal, st the standard normal distribution, we recognize here phi of x. And we know that 1 less phi of x is phi of less x. Which means, coming back to what we have on the top, that for the second integral, we have e exponential of less r2 times what corresponds to this integral, which means phi of less log of e less m over s, as written down here. 
reminding on the top what we've obtained on the previous slide, we are going now to focus on the first integral. And we are going to change the variable again. I mean that instead of having u less s, we are going to have a new variable, the name of which is v. And of course, u is then equal to v plus s, corresponding to a new function, phi of v, the derivative of which being 1. And of course, if we come back to v equals u less s, and we replace v, uh, u, sorry, by v, we have phi less 1 of v, which is v less s. And then, with this change of variable, we replace u less s by v, and of course, we multiply by phi prime of v, which is 1. This is what we had on the previous page. And taking into account what's been highlighted previously, we are going to say that we recognize here uh, the density function of the standard normal distribution. And then, as we have an integral from x to plus infinity, and as we know that it is phi of less x, we can say that we have here phi of less log of v e less m over s, and we change the sign here, plus s. Now we only have to put everything on the same denominator, which means less times less is plus m less log of v e plus s squared over s. And we can also change the signs here and write down m less log of v. E. Now we are going to come back to the initial notations, namely for m, the first parameter of uh, uh, the normal distribution, we know that m is equal to log of s0 plus mu less sigma squared over 2 times 2. We still have less r2, and instead of writing down s squared, we can replace by sigma squared 2. Then, for m here, again, we have log of s0 plus mu less sigma squared over 2 times 2. And for s squared, again, we have sigma squared 2. Idem here, m is log of s0 plus mu less sigma squared over 2 times 2. And of course, we keep here and here less log of v. E. Two new changes. First of all, uh, we are in the background of an arbitrage portfolio. And in that context, we can replace the expected return of the stock mu by the risk-free rate, which is R. And then if we develop, we have here R2 less R2, which means that we are going to get rid of that. And we can also see that we have here less sigma squared over 2 times 2 plus sigma squared over 2 times 2, which simplify. Moreover, inside this big bracket, inside phi, we have log of s0 less log of e, which is log of s0 over e. And of course, if we have less sigma squared over 2 plus sigma squared, we have plus sigma squared over 2, of course, times 2. And here, we can also group log of S0 and less log of E, which becomes log of S0 over E. And we forgot to say, but it's obvious, that exponential of log of S0 is S0, because log and exponential are reciprocal functions. And we only have to terminate to note d1, what's in red here, and d2, what's in green. And then we recognize the customary Black and Scholes formula.